Well, welcome today, everyone. Uh, so glad to uh, to have everyone here. We've got about 12 participants, and uh, we're going to be, uh, of course, uh, recording this uh, for uh, replay on our online, uh, well, the HES uh, OLC, the Online Leadership Community uh, site. If you don't have a login, uh, all you got to do is just email me. Uh, I spam everyone enough, uh, so everyone knows my email address. It's so good to have you with us. Uh, we're very, very uh, excited about what we're going to hear today from a good friend, a longtime partner of Hess. I think you were there in the very beginning, uh, uh, nearly 10 years ago when we started Hess, uh, Wayne Bovier. He's been a, a good friend. He's president and CEO of, uh, of Higher Digital, and he's going to impart uh, some of his wisdom uh, to us, which it, he has a lot of experience in this area. Uh, in terms about uh, in terms of the uh, future of change management in higher education. So, Wayne, welcome. We're so glad to have you with us, and we're excited about what you're going to share. So, uh, take it away. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. And uh, definitely love the uh, the guitar playing music uh, uh, in the back background. So let me um, let me pull up my presentation. Uh, let me share with you and let's go dive in. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a real pleasure uh, to be with you uh, today um, to talk about uh, the future of change management and specifically um, this concept about managing change across your enterprise, especially as you're considering move into the cloud. The cloud really kind of changes uh, the dynamics. And so, you know, Given that this is a higher education audience, I figure I'd start with talking about what are you going to learn today um, by investing your time in this webinar? Um, what are you going to get out of it? Um, I think the first thing is for us to just kind of level set on exactly what change management is. And then to understand um, not only the successes that change management will deliver, but in particular, the limitations that limit that that change management methodologies have on moving to the cloud, and ultimately, why cloud moving to the cloud, moving your ERP to to a SaaS environment, um, really does require uh, change management more so than uh, than in the past. Um, my name is Wayne Bovier, and I'm founder CEO of Higher Digital, and um, we have put together a leadership team that really has a very diverse background, not only in software, but specifically around higher education. We kind of come from all facets. And, um, and specifically, we're focused, and I've started this company um, uh, focused on higher education and specifically ar around change. So over the last six years, what have we really done? Um, what we've what we've established is a methodology, and this methodology is think about it as being purpose built for higher education. Um, it was built upon all the methodologies uh, that are out there today in terms of how you manage IT uh, and change management, and and specifically we wanted to create something that was enterprise wide that was purpose built. Once we've created this methodology we started to recognize patterns and uh, inefficiencies. And so we started to build out the ability to provide rapid analysis across your institution um, and really provide a way for you to benchmark and put in context uh, all the changes that you need to make in addition to all the projects and balancing all the projects. And we worked with a lot of leading institutions uh, over the course of the last six years in perfecting this process. Uh, and we're, we're happy to kind of share some of these major new updates and capabilities. Simply put, our specialty has been and will remain uh, change uh, for higher education. We also call this digital transformation um, and think about digital transformation really as a holistic approach to change, um, uh, specifically for higher education. And as you guys all know, um, changes across the industry are accelerating. Um, and what's 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 even more interesting is that all of these changes are underpinned by technology. So digital transformation literally impacts every single one of you uh, and all your departments, uh, direct and indirect stakeholders. Uh, and you know the challenge is that you know that there's more of these changes uh, that that are coming. And so 
why should somebody, you know, why should a small institution or why should a HES member ultimately care about change, uh, change management? And I want to start by, you know, putting this in context between the past and the present. In the past, when whether it's your ERP or LMS or any of the other systems, you would bring them, you would buy them and bring them on premise. Uh, and most of you are in the process of, of moving your uh, software from on premise to the cloud. But historically, the software that you brought on premise, most of you have uh, done some level of customization. So the burden has changed, really was placed on the software, the software vendor and your IT organization to fit the software for your, for your enterprise. In, a, in the cloud world, which is where we're all going today, we're moving more and more of our capabilities to the cloud. Not only do you have to replicate the capabilities, the software capabilities uh, to the cloud environment, move the data and so on and all the capabilities, but there's a significant level of change that is also impacting the enterprise. Um, and this is not just the direct departments like the registrar or enrollment, but all the other indirect uh, uh, departments across your entire institution. And so in the past, you know, this idea of change management, it really wasn't nice to have. And it produced results. And I'm going to come through, I'm going to cover those results here in a second, that change management is a worthy investment. Um, but in the past, as I mentioned, software was customized. And so, especially if you're one that has a lot of on-premise software that is customized, this is this adds another significant layer of change that you're gonna your entire institution is gonna have to go through. And, um, and, but more importantly, I think in the, in the, and not only today, but in the future, the software, once you move to the soft, once you move your software to the cloud, you, in, in order to embrace new capabilities, think, think about Salesforce, right? When Salesforce comes out with artificial intelligence capabilities or your LMS comes out with artificial intelligence capabilities, you're gonna need to adapt. Um, you're gonna need to adapt not only the departments, but across your enterprise to embrace embrace these new capabilities. And so our belief is that you know, moving to the cloud really requires a broader understanding and commitment to enterprise-wide change. Um, and just to kind of highlight, and I'll pepper this throughout, um, we've, we historically have worked with Dickinson College um, and specifically worked with President Jones and Jill Forrester, the CIO, um, who I think is attending uh, this uh, this webinar. So hi, Jill. Um, but but Dickinson, uh, we were able to provide the board and leadership with a rapid analysis across the across all of Dickinson um, as a way to help them essentially provide a change roadmap that they've been since implementing uh, since we did this engagement. So. Let's take a step back. I'm not going to make any assumptions that we're all on the same same page of exactly what is change management. But let me let me start by going and, and just so we're level level set on exactly what this is. Change management is a systematic approach. It, it's really a systematic approach for organizations to embrace uh, changes necessary to achieve goals, processes, and technologies. Okay, and this systematic approach is uh, is really a the purpose is to you know, achieve the the goals the the uh, the changes that you need to make to uh, whatever uh, strategies you're trying to accomplish, and so you know the why is, is that, and then the how is really a you know it's delivered traditionally. Um, there's different types of methodologies that are out there. They're, in my mind, they're all relatively the same. Um, you know, ProSci has been out there for decades and they've been, you know, they have a lot of documented processes around this. Um, and it's a really worthy investment if you've never done change management. Okay. Um, but understand that this is really process based and it's high touch. Um, it really requires a lot of human engagement uh, for this to happen, more so than uh, than you know more an auto, more automated way. And so I want to highlight. So you know, in moving to the cloud, um, some of the challenges that get amplified 
really uh, focus around this concept of sponsorship and support, uh, effective communication, lack of change buy-in, limited commitment, and then change resistant culture. And, and if you have if any one of these, and I talk to you know uh, many institutions per day, and these are consistent themes, whether it's a small liberal arts institution all the way up to an R1. Um, these are all pretty well uh, experienced by most, most institutions. And moving to the cloud really starts to amplify some of the cracks in the foundation, so to speak. And so with change management, ultimately staff and faculty feel better prepared. They're, they're, they're more engaged, they're better equipped uh, and supported. And, and I learned this lesson a long time ago um, is that it, it, without, without engaging your staff, without engaging your team, um, what's going to get replaced is fear uh, and fear and anxiety and all of that. And so um, there are just enormous amount of historic benefits to doing change management. But traditional change management has been very much focused within the project and departments. Um, and, uh, and so um, what you're able to, to accomplish is your project objectives, staying on schedule, right? These are all types of things. So, but however, what ends up happening is in, the, in using an example is moving your ERP uh, to the cloud, right? Or changing your ERP. It is one of several IT related projects going on at once across your entire institution. Okay. Even a small institution has many requests kind of coming in. Uh, from silos and different departments, and they come into IT uh, and left up for interpretation. What should get prioritized? What shouldn't? How you know what? What are, is the business requirement? And these interpretations, just think about it as a big game of telephone, are captured um, within you know different different systems. And so what you have is a very complicated, man, overly manual process uh, within an org within an institution. Um, that struggles to do enterprise-wide alignment. And even when you do embrace change management, especially in a cloud environment, is that the, the harsh reality is still most of these change initiatives do fail. And most organizations do not understand how to really value uh, change management. Okay, and so in today's SaaS world, our, our view is, yeah, if you haven't started with change management, do start, but also understand that the current methodologies do, there's, they, they do fall short, especially in a cloud environment. Um, and so what, what we highlight is that, you know, it is expensive, you know, change management is, an exp is, is expensive, both in time and money. It's laborious, already highlighted, but it's it's overly manual. So if you hire, and I love picking on a Deloitte, but you hire a Deloitte, they're gonna they're gonna you know uh, put an uh, army of consultants on uh, on uh, on on your institution, and um, and it's very manual. Interviews, the process, scheduling meetings, all of this is very very expensive, and also it's very limited in terms of its approach to data. Uh, it's not real time. It's not leveraging the KPIs throughout your system. How are how are you really measuring across these different silos of systems that you, that you have that are that uh, retain impertinent um, data and information? And it's ultimately incomplete. Um, I highlighted most of these change management. If you think back to that that graph that I showed you in terms of the on premise world. Most of the change management methodologies are really focused around the change there at a department level, at, um, at uh, uh, individual level. And these are all really important. Where it really starts to struggle is when you start to try to coordinate across the entire enterprise across the entire institution. And then these methodologies really, I, you know, for lack of a better way of saying it, um, uh, requires methodology, please. It really requires consistent, manual uh, policing to make sure that you adhere to these uh, to these this methodology, this change methodology. To put it another way, um, you know, uh, project change, you know, the project methodology way uh, after a certain period of time. Um, and it really it goes from project to project that you're essentially going to need to reinvent the wheel. 
And so there's a there's ultimately we believe there's a better way of doing this. And so we um, have taken a more, we've built upon these methodologies and these concepts to do a purpose built uh, an automated approach to change management specifically for higher education. And some of the capabilities that are within our, our, our service uh, is, is benchmarking anonymously, both internally and externally. Um, you know, there's a lot of fear of change. And so understanding where you are, where your institution is, where your department is, uh, and doing this anonymously, anonymously is really important. The other aspect to this is, or what you're, what we're also able to do is, we're gonna, we we deliver a custom plan that really starts to consider your culture. Every institution has a unique culture, um, and yes, there is always a fear aspect to somebody's culture. But we, as in, as higher digital, are able to benchmark your culture and really understand and help you understand, you know, how does your culture impact change. Um, and what kind of resistance can you predict? And the good news is that, you know, culture can change and it always changes. Um, and there are things that you can or we can do together that ultimately will start to address some of the some of the historical obstacles of your culture. We align pro these projects. So, again, think about the, moving your ERP to the cloud. Um, how does that align to your overall strategy? How do and the ERP is inclusive, right? Of HR and finance and and the student systems, and each one of those has different strategies. And so, how does that ultimately align to those strategies? And then, how do you prioritize across the silos? These are all things that we've kind of purposely uh, 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 have built uh, for higher education. And we believe in a life cycle that this should not change management should not just be project oriented. It should be a organizational strength that that you measure and repeat. And you can do this across departments, your institution and across your entire entire system. So simply put, we're, we have a, what we call change management as a service, and it saves you months of planning. And it really de-risks a lot of these major, major investments that, you, that you're making. Um, so when you think about certain activities like analysis and benchmarking and prioritization and planning, there's a lot of time, a lot of meetings that you have to go through. Uh, you know, it, it, you know this, this image of herding cats constantly comes to mind, right? Um, well, there's a more effective and efficient way uh, way to do this uh, using technology, um, but not you know using technology, but to enhance the human to human coordination and and decision making that needs to be made, not replace it. It really enhances this. So we were able to save lots of time in doing this. And so one of the packages that we offer, and I'd like to highlight here for you all, is, is what we call, a, 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 it's a free one month baseline change plan. And this is a custom change plan for your institution. Um, and it really is informative uh, to help you with not only your ERP transformation, but other, um, other major projects or even minor projects that you have. And this is available to all of your stakeholders. Uh, one of the things that we constantly hear is like, oh, we're surveyed, you know, we have we, we received too many surveys, I'm worried about my department, I'm really worried about my job and being identified, all this kind of stuff. Just understand that everything is confidential and private. We assess institutions, not individuals, okay? And we, uh, we assess the institution based upon as many stakeholders engaging with us as possible. And the more that they, they engage, the more um, nuanced in our recommendations that we can get. And so in a matter of weeks and days, we're able to provide a change management and baseline, culture baseline assessment. What can you expect? What are some of the strengths and weaknesses? as a way to expand and, and make your planning way more robust than in the past. The tactical aspects, the best practices that, that you have experienced in the past, along with your ERP vendor, are well documented, but they're, they're incomplete. Um, and they're incomplete because you really do need to understand the organizational impact of change, your operational impact on change, there are obviously some technical components to change, right? This ERP has to work with lots of other systems uh, and so on and so forth. And so we, we, we put this assessment together 
Um, we can do this through a workshop, a uh, virtual workshop. We can do it in person. And ultimately, what you get is a holistic plan with recommendations and a ch a, an initial change management certificate. And so last year, for those that attended last year, um, we uh, I presented in June uh, in 22 uh, uh, as part of a HES webinar where we were able to, to do a co compare and contrast. And this is a key component of our, our capabilities a year ago, it still remains. And so what you can see here is, and this is a capability that we have today, where you're we're gonna be able to see positive changes and negative changes across your organization, right? Is, you know, hey, stakeholders are preparing more, leadership is taking more accountability. Meanwhile, some of the negative changes, there's still this new technology initiatives, uh, 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 you know, AI is causing a threat. Um, there's trust issues. And, and my opinion is, uh, is never really uh, heard and things like that. These are all important information uh, for us and you and your project to, uh, to, to consider. And so cha our change management as a service, we've launched new capabilities since then. OK, and so just to, just a review, we're able to rapidly assess and benchmark across many different dimensions. We're able to do this in real time. And as I, as I emphasized, everybody is anonymous. Every institution is anonymous and we embrace global privacy standards. OK, um, we also provide the ability to do external benchmarking. Again, everyone's anonymous. So, you know, these are all, all every single one of these dots. Think of these are institutions. So you're going to be able to see other cohorts about hey, overall, how are we faring compared to uh, the rest of the industry, other, other institutions that are our size of enrollment or, or uh, uh, private versus public, so on and so forth. So this is really informing you. And again, all of this is done kind of in real time. You answer, take 10 minutes of answering some questions and you start to immediately get our analysis of your, of your institution. I just talked about external benchmarking. This is now internal benchmarking. So think about this as a as an HR 360 for your institution. Is so how is really the institution? What's the scatter plot? What are the stakeholders? How are we assessing answers of stakeholders uh, and running it through our algorithm to assess the institution? Where's everyone faring? And how does this add up to you know overall uh, overall capabilities for your institution? And again, this is just one of about 15 different dimensions we really analyze your institution on. And for those that are part of a system, um, and we have, we're have we actively working with uh, North Carolina Community College System, we're working with uh, the California Community College System, we're able to do um, system-wide benchmarking as well, um, really to provide system-level leadership with a, with a really much data-driven understanding of their system, uh, their system strengths and weaknesses, and as a way to really help system leadership to pinpoint areas where they can best help. What we're also launching um, is this ability for, to do prioritization. So if you think about once you got all the data and you're able to assess and understand where you are, the next logical step and change is prioritize. Right. Let's get together. Let's prioritize across your HR group, your finance group and your student group. Right. Uh, again, picking on the ERP transformation as uh, as an example. And this is something that we're we're excited to, to release. Um, we're launching a design partner program. There are two HES uh, members that are part of this program uh, that we're excited to really focus around this concept of prioritization across the enterprise. And specifically, we're targeting this capability for IT governing uh, committees and boards. Uh, and so there's a lot of information that we're going to be you know, unveiling. And uh, not only in, uh, next week at Educause, um, I'll be at the uh, HES annual conference in, in November. I would love to talk to you guys about this if you have any questions about this. But um, the ability to prioritize and to vote and align, we're really looking to streamline Consolidate and streamline this decision for uh, for these governing boards across your entire institution. Okay, um, but we're not stopping there. Uh, we're we're actively uh, having roadmap items around the ability to measure this performance against your overall strategy. 
um, being able to vote based upon your strategy. So we're 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 going to be collecting uh, and incorporating your your institution strategy as part of the prioritization capabilities, as a, as a way to be able to help you provide context uh, in making these decisions. And then we believe that this is a this is something that shouldn't be project a, a project one off. Um, so you want to be able to track historical change progress and get better over time that you're going to want to apply these capabilities, not only in knowledge and, and, and approaches, not only when you're done with your ERP, but the next major project uh, that you have. And so our change management service, uh, we have four packages. Um, we break it out into one month, three months, six months, and 12 months. And they all think about this as they all build upon each other, okay? And so if you are an institution where change management is new to you, uh, you have a challenged budget, uh, you have uh, a leadership that is traditionally resistant to change, or have some key stakeholders that are resistant to change. I would strong, and I would target, you know, for you, the Hess institutions, if, you know, the one month is a great low risk, zero risk way of really starting to understand of, you know, where you are and how you can incorporate some of these capabilities or some of these strengths and weaknesses and, and, and assessments and recommendations from us into your broader plan. The three month expands on that. It gets a much more detailed plan um, across your your institution, um, and it really, really, it, it really does it, uh, uh, kind of uh, prepare, better prepare you for these major projects. And then we have a six and twelve month where we take a small team, and I'm talking one to three individuals over the course of six to twelve months, part time, um, that really get embedded with your 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 project team, your enterprise. Um, where we can kind of help around uh, full program management across all the different vendors uh, uh, that you're working with. And again, think about your ERP. You know, there's a lot of uh, project change that's already being covered by you and, and your ERP vendor. But there's a lot of coordination that needs to happen across the enterprise. And so we can help uh, manage that. We can help lead the synchronized planning work streams across all these different uh, stakeholder groups. And this is really for institutions that are that are committed to change management um, that really require a successful deployment in an expected period of time. And, you know, that, you know, maybe some of you have had high historically project failure rates. And I put failure in air quotes because, you know, if it takes twice as long and twice as much budget, um, I would consider that kind of a, a failure a, as well. And so. Uh, so failure is broadly defined on that. And so another reference I want to highlight is we worked with Anne uh, and we continue to work with Anne and St. John's around, uh, we initially started with a change blueprint. Um, we, in fact, I believe Anne attended the HESS webinar from last year and that's how we started to work together. Uh, and it really has informed uh, her move to Banner SAS uh, since then we're, we're still actively working, working with Anne. Uh, and we also have plenty of, uh, of other references, but I'd like to highlight Ed, uh, who's the CIO at NG uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology, um, where we're actively, again, embedded as part of his organization, really helping them. Uh, we were successful in moving their, uh, their, their ERP from on-premise to the cloud, and we were able to speed, speed up alignment and coordination across all of uh, NJIT. And so um, I just want to finish up with this slide, and then I would like to open it up for any kind of questions and uh, and comments. But you know, ultimately, why should change management matter? You you absolutely need to matter. It, it matters. It, it mattered in the past, maybe less so, but it mattered. It produced results um, when you when you brought your software on premise and you started to customize it to fit your enterprise, your your organization, your processes. However, when you move to the cloud, it really changes the dynamic. And so moving, you know, there's, you know, the, not only the, 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 the data just needs to be migrated, but what about the customizations? Um, I will tell you that I've, I've heard all the way up to 10,000 customizations being done on one ERP. And I, I still, to this day, have a hard time believing that. That's the most, um, but pretty much every institution I've been working with have some level of customizations. Well, those customizations embody, you know, uh, an, an antiquated process. How do you, you know, 
how does your your process to tell IT I gotta I gotta make these customizations now? How do you change those processes? How do you fit it, right? Uh, and so, and then not only the technical stuff, but the across your enterprise changes to change. And so SaaS requires really enterprise wide coordinated change. Uh, and this is where really methodologies kind of fall a little bit short. It's a little too manual and expensive. And so when you upgrade your RP, this is a major project to embrace change management. Um, it, it, it shouldn't be considered a project, uh, a one-off. And yes, it is an, an additional investment that you do need to make. Um, and, but we believe that it shouldn't have to break the budget, that it shouldn't be overly as manual uh, as, uh, as what you've maybe experienced in the past. And so simply put, we can help, uh, and we're committed to, uh, that's what we've been committed to as a, as a company from the beginning, we're going to continue to enhance our capabilities and really try to help you all deal with the amount of change that, that we're dealing, uh, dealing with. And so, um, I want to thank you. I want to thank Keith uh, uh, for the opportunity here. Um, that is my uh, uh, digital business card. So if you want to scan uh, my uh, my business card, you can do there or feel free to send me an email. So if you're interested in learning more, if you're interested in taking advantage of the the free baseline, the one month baseline, just please reach out to me, send me an email um, and let me know uh, what you're thinking. So with that, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to stop sharing um, and would love to open up for any any questions, comments. Yeah, I've been looking at the at the chat. There is, aren't any comments yet or any questions. Anyone, uh, please make sure we've got we've got Wayne on the line now. Uh, don't be shy, shy. Open up, and you know I'm uncomfortable with long silence. So uh, uh, you guys ask ask your questions quick. <laughs> I wish I had the Jeopardy theme going. At this <laughs> we got a shy. We got a shy group. Got to work on that. Any well, questions? I will be. I will be in Kentucky, uh, in Louisville, uh, personally. Um, Love to kind of meet you guys there. We will have a, a little a little table, uh, so I welcome you know any any commentary uh, and um, and any questions uh, that you guys have. Excellent, I, thanks Wayne. It is a wonderful presentation, a new kind of take on on uh, change management and uh, that type of consulting, which is so important in our institutions these days, May, maybe more so than ever before. Uh, and it's it's great to have a partner that has a lot of good information and good background on change management. Uh, if you've got any questions about the rates uh, and our our business affiliate status with uh, with Higher Digital, just go on to Hess Consortium. Uh, actually, the Hess uh, Online Community uh, That's our that's that's our our, our uh, OLC, the Online Leadership Community. Uh, go out there if you don't have a uh, log in, make sure to get one. We can we can make sure that happens. And um, if you have not already um, signed up for the upcoming uh, Hess National Conference, it's going to be November 15th and 16th. Our hotel uh, uh, holdout block is, is up on October 14th. So it's coming up very soon. Uh, the hotel room is very, very inexpensive, and so is the conference. $150, you get an amazing conference from many speakers of all different types. And in addition to that, of course, uh, all the meals are included. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And let me tell you, the Galt House Hotel in Louisville, uh, Wayne's been there. It is an amazing place with a great chef. So it's a, a wonderful time to be together, network with other institutions, and really learn a lot from our business partners. So I want to encourage you all to be a part of this. But Wayne, thank you again for being a part of uh, our, our webinar today. Um, Wayne is available. Uh, all contact information is out there on the Hess OLC. Uh, just join up, uh, Hess, Hess Community. Uh, I'm sorry, www.hesscommunity.org and go on there and log in and you can get into all that information through the, the link at the top business partners. So um, 
Thanks again, Wayne. Uh, everyone have a great day and thank you for being a part of this webinar. Thanks. Thank you, Keith. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone.